Hey everyone, JT here from the NoCode Founders community and today I'm checking out another NoCode tool in 10 minutes. Today I'm looking at BaseRow. Now BaseRow started as an open source alternative to Airtable, but since then it's grown to being a fully fledged NoCode backend. It's fully open source and it can also be self-hosted, which removes all the limits that we're used to with Airtable in terms of like the number of rows, the number of users you can add, um, and also resolves those issues of massively scaling costs, which these are the main objections I usually hear about Airtable. Airtable is an incredibly popular tool in no-code space and is used a lot as a back-end solution as well. Um, but there's definite limitations and pricing changes are, are making it a less attractive option for, for people building businesses using it. So I wanted to check out base row. Um, first, let's take a look at the pricing and then we'll dive in to actually looking at the tools. So the premium plan is $5 per user per month, which is a lot less than Airtable. You have the option to do hosted or self-hosted. Self-hosted, um, you're hosting it yourself, so you, there's no limit on the number of rows. So that completely removes the scalability uh, issues. And you can make that as performant as you want based on, on the hardware that you use as well. The hosted option gives you 10,000 rows per workspace, uh, which is a similar type of um, pricing structure to Airtable, but the limits are much higher here. Um, that's $5 per month, or you can go to quarter of a million rows for only $20. And the feature list is basically identical, and they actually have even more features than Airtable. Um, so that they don't have the strict uh, limits on the APIs, which is really good if you're using it as a backend. Um, there's automation, there's real-time collaboration built in, as well as all of the other Airtable features. So let's jump into um, an actual instance. So here we have uh, now the the base row team were kind enough to s set me up with some example data, which is really useful for this uh, demo. So this table here has 100,000 records in it, and we have 10 data points on this one. So, um, no, sorry, 10 fields. So effectively, we have uh, 1 million data points on this particular table. And it has a load of images in here as well. Um, so there's a lot of data. Um, we also have fields going up to a million, uh, records going up to a million rows. Uh, let's try this one. Now it's loading pretty fast, um, but you can get this even faster if you're, if you're self-hosting on your own instance, um, dependent on, on which hardware you use. But this, this table that we're looking at now is 500,000 rows. Again, 10 fields, so we're looking at, what's that, 5 million uh, data points. Again, there's image fields in there, um, but it's still loading uh, really quickly, which is incredible. Uh, we can open up a record as well to see what that looks like. So it's a very similar interface to Airtable, so if you've used Airtable before, you'll be very familiar with this. All right, so I've just jumped out to the base row dashboard. This is where we have our individual workspaces. So we can have multiple workspaces and we can see all our projects, all our tables, databases here. Uh, so we've just looked at the big tables database and we have this other one here called Project Tracker. So let's have a look at this. So in the actual table, we can see there are four different uh, tables set up. We have the projects, tasks, clients, team, and these are all connected. They're all interlinked. So we have this field here, the client field is linking into the client's database and then the project lead and project team uh, fields are linked to the team database. So if we go over to the team database, we can see for each person in the team which uh, project they're a lead on and which project they've served as a team member. This is also connected through to the tasks database um, and we have a link back to the uh, assigned person here, which is the team database. That's also linked into the projects database. So we have this two-way linkage set up between all the databases, which allows us to build more complex applications, things like CRMs, um, where we need to link up different data types 
this can be set up as a one-way linkage or a two-way linkage as well, um, similar to how you can do this in Airtable. So let's go back to the projects one and we can add another couple of fields. So there's a wide variety of field types to choose from. Again, these are very similar to the fields that we see in Airtable. We can add a field like created on where uh, it's going to automatically add the date um, or time as well where the field has been created. We can also do things like add a collaborator field. Um, turn this off just now to the notification for uh, notifying new users. And here we can add in specific users um, and they would get notified of these if you if you want them to. You can also see over here uh, these number ones that shows that there is a comment on this already. So Hiram has sent me a comment here. I can mention him back and say thanks Hiram. And he'll get notified of that as well. Um, this is the breakdown of the actual view itself where we can uh, update all the information. We have comments and we can also see the history of changes for each individual field as well. So let's also just add one uh, table link. So we'll link this over to the tasks table and we want this to be a two-way link so we will have this checkbox to check as well to create a field in the linked table. Um, you know, let's call it tasks two. So we see this coming here we can link to an existing task and then if we go over to tasks we should see a new field there and we see the link that we've just created there as well. One other thing that I want to show you on this particular view is well a couple of things. Firstly we also have this option to create views so as well as having the separate tables we can have separate views of each table so we can have specific uh, views for filters which are, are saved. So if our completed is checked, we can have this checkbox checked for example. So we have different views for different filters, but then we also have these other options to add different types of views in the same way that you can with Airtable. So we have grid, form, calendar, gallery and the Kanban view. So we have this Kanban view set up already, which is, fil which is creating a different um, card design for each category but let's just create one more view here as well we could do a calendar view we'll do it based on the kickoff date and so we can add that maybe let's add a gallery as well just so you can see how that looks um, and this is based on the individual records but we can then also customize the, the data that's shown on each of those as well the feature that I really love here is this color color feature. So we can add a, a left border color or a background color and I'll show you both. So in this situation, I'm going to do the left border color based on the single select of the category field. So you can see it's now color coding it to the color uh, in this category field so that we can quickly identify different uh, the different records that we have. We can also do a background color where it's going to make the entire uh, row the color, which is really, which I really love. This makes it possible to you know, highlight things in a, a really visual way. Um, and as well as that, you can also do it based on conditions. So let's say when completed is yes, we can then highlight that a color to show that it's been completed, which is really powerful. And that is the table view in general. Um, you can go into all the different filtering options as well. Um, but combining all these things together gives you a lot of flexibility and power in terms of what you can actually build out and create and for managing your data. All right, so we're back on the base row dashboard and I'm just going to quickly create a new project so we have the option to start from scratch with a database or create from a template. And then we have all these various different 
templates which have built-in tables and all the link linkages set up already. Um, so we can use this template to, to start using that one. Or we can start from scratch, which is what I'm going to do here. And there's an option here to import from Airtable. So if you're already an Airtable user, this is ridiculously easy. We come to the share option in uh, Airtable database and we paste it in here and import and it just creates that for us. And that's it. Um, it's all set up already. And we have the various different table views in there as well, which is amazing. So that is how we can import directly from Airtable really quick. And the last thing I want to show you is the option to add various different role levels. So I can invite members um, with their email address and give them various different levels of access so they can have full access or they can have options to configure and edit applications. You can edit but not options to configure applications, then commenter roles, viewer roles, and then no access as well. Um, so this is really good if you're giving other users access for various different things, either within your own team or perhaps you're a freelancer and you want to give different levels of access to your clients um, as, they're, as you're building. So that is a quick overview of BaseRow. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I will see you in the next one.